Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Economic Development Newscast. I'm your host, CEO of Next Move Group, Chuck Sexton. I wanted to start off, and I'm going to maybe spoil a little bit from rounding the bases here that Ivy's going to be talking about later, but I wanted to congratulate Network Sullivan Partnership down in Bristol, Tennessee, and the city of Bristol and the county of Sullivan there in the state of Tennessee on the big win with Seaman Corporation uh, this past week. Uh, I was able to work with all of these entities on the location of Seaman Corporation down there. And certainly I appreciate what a great job Clay Walker and his team at Network Sullivan Partnership did. Lynn Tully with the state of Tennessee, obviously Commissioner McWhorter, uh, as well as everyone at the city of Bristol who made this project happen. Seaman Corporation is a great company. It's going to be going down there to Bristol and uh, certainly is going to be adding quite a few new jobs and a great investment there in Tennessee. I'm sure Ivy will cover this as well in the later segment. Um, you know, one of the things and one of the reasons that uh, that client chose Bristol, Tennessee in the Network Sullivan Partnership region territory was because of their site readiness. And that's something that we've talked about a lot on the podcast and here on the newscast. Certainly, a lot of states have been investing in that, Kentucky, Tennessee, obviously, uh, with what happened down there in Bristol, North Carolina, South Carolina. Ohio, however, has made a big announcement recently. Governor Mike DeWine proposed a $2.5 billion increase in the budget to prepare shovel-ready sites for new businesses. Uh, that is in particular for locations around the state of Ohio to attract new business. You know, Ohio has had a lot of announcements, but they're they're doubling down and they're going to invest in this to continue to be aggressive. That's $100 million in tax credits additionally for uh, to support development and rehab of low-income multifamily rental housing. So not only are they going to focus on industrial site development, they are putting money into the housing issues. As all of you know, we've talked about this also on the podcast and the newscast. And as we're out there doing site selection and our peers and colleagues in site selection doing the same thing, we are asking on behalf of our clients what the housing looks like as far as development goes within your community. And so you have to have a plan right now for new housing, especially low income, middle income housing. There's a lot of housing out there on the market right now. There's actually more uh, demand than there is supply. So it's keeping housing prices elevated while interest rates are continuing to rise and it's causing a major crisis. And you have to figure this out. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is assisting with housing studies. I'll talk about that a little later on. I want to focus, continue to focus on these investments in site rates because West Virginia is doing something similar right now where uh, not only is the state making investments in site readiness, but they're allowing in certain territories of the state for utilities to do that. And speaking of West Virginia, I just got back uh, from Fairmont, West Virginia, delivering a strategic plan for the Marion Regional Development Corporation. Uh, that's a local economic development group there in Fairmont, West Virginia. Certainly appreciated doing that process for them. I think we're going to continue to work with that community to help get that organization sort of back on its feet, set a new foundation for it going forward. Uh, another strategic plan we've kicked off this past month is with Appalachian Power Company. We really appreciate the chance to work with them on this aerospace strategy uh, for their entire power territory in West Virginia. Um, you know, one of the other things that we have going on, right? I mentioned just a minute ago, housing studies. We're, we're wrapping one up uh, in Texas right now and about to kick off possibly two in the state of Ohio. And, and as I said before, Housing is going to continue to be a critical component to winning new projects and new jobs and new investment in your communities. And so, you know, whether you use us or someone else, I highly suggest if you haven't done a housing study and strategy, it's not just about the study. It's not just about understanding where you are and where you need to be from a housing perspective. It's about putting together strategies on how your community specifically can attract developers that will put in the types of housing that you need because every community is different. Your taxation is different. What you have from a stock standpoint, inventory standpoint of, of city owned or county owned land, all that is different. And what you can do to incentivize them is going to be different in each location. So you don't just need the study. You need the strategies. Make sure you're getting that done. Uh, coming up, we will be speaking at SEDC. Chad is going to be there. Uh, he's going to be kicking off the uh, the whole event with the Young Professionals. I think that's fantastic. I remember the first Young Professionals event I ever went to it was in Greenville, South Carolina. I got to meet a lot of great consultants there that I'm still friends with to this day. And, and I kind of love the fact that I get to be on their side of things now and, and sort of doing the same thing. I'm going to watch Chad and try to learn from him as he talks to the YPs at this event. 
And then we will be partnering uh, with our friends at Convergent Nonprofit Solutions uh, for a talk there at SEDC on how to take strategy, like we're talking about here, what we're doing with these organizations, how to take your strategy and your EDO and combine that with your funding model and increase funding uh, for your economic development group. So uh, I hope you can be uh, a part of that as well at SEDC in Williamsburg, Virginia, coming up here in just a couple of weeks. I'll also be doing a FAM tour. Uh, that My next FAM tour is going to be uh, with the Northeastern Strategic Alliance. Uh, that's a nine-county group, uh, EDO, in South Carolina. So think the Florence, Myrtle Beach area. I'll be doing a FAM tour down there. You know, as we get into sort of the fall time frame um, and projects, I think are going to slow down a little bit. It might be a good time if you all would like uh, us to come out and do a FAM tour within your region, do any kind of board trainings. This is kind of the year that that starts heating up. Uh, so I would suggest that that's something you have in mind to get a hold of us sooner rather than later so we can schedule that into uh, our calendars uh, as we get into third and fourth quarter of this year. Don't forget, Mardi Gras 2024 registration is open. We only have 12 spots as of this afternoon, 12 spots left in the hotel block. Uh, so we're, what we're doing is going to work on getting additional hotel rooms out there and available but if you have registered, but you haven't got your hotel yet, you want to make sure and do that because this is going to be the best rate you can get currently. So that one went very, very quickly. We're excited. Uh, we released all of the site consultants who are going to be there. Uh, my buddy Bob Westover, who I got to have some fun with in Myrtle Beach earlier this year, uh, is going to be on a panel. Uh, Mike Mullis, Tess Fay, a whole group of great site consultants are going to be there with us, along with some folks who are going to talk about you know, some of the issues surrounding um, um, disaster preparedness, making sure your community is ready to bounce back from a disaster. Obviously, now that I have moved to Western Kentucky, I'm kind of seeing firsthand what's going on over in Mayfield after that massive tornado that happened a couple of years ago. They're still struggling to get their downtown back in order. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be a great session because so many of our movement members and clients have faced issues this year, whether those are tornadoes or floods or hurricanes. It just seems like there's been a massive amount of those this year. So make sure if you haven't done that to, to check that out. We have a lot of executive search going on, and Alex will be here shortly to talk about that in the Your Next Move segment. Thank you for joining us on the news. And if you have news you'd like us to share, make sure and reach out, Chuck, at nextmovegroup.com. Until next month. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today.